the fam, that's what they call me. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Michelle, and today we're gonna to be cooking, and we're gonna be cooking a simple recipe with simple ingredients. Dare ask myself, can I go wrong? Watch long enough, and I'm sure you and I will both find out. This recipe was sent to me by Paul, AKA Choppy. I am trying to work through his, what I have now created as kind of like a book, a British recipe book. And so in today's video, we are gonna do authentic Carlisle patties. Hopefully I pronounced all those things right. And to my understanding, Carlisle is a little city that, I don't even know if it's little. Anyways, it's a city inside of Cumbria and it's about eight miles from Scotland. So if you guys are into all that, geographical stuff and want to know exactly where it's at just picture that on the map and that's where we're cooking from today okay i do not know if this is a, tr is a traditional dish that is usually served in carlisle or if it's just something he grew up on but i am excited to try it first ingredient corned beef yuck let's just go ahead and say canned beef i already when i looked at the recipe was not liking the ingredients. In all honesty, I've never had this canned beef stuff. I know, I grew up in the South, and in the South, we make stuff that is absurd with the littlest ingredients and the cheapest ingredients. That is what the South is known for. We can make a dish that feeds thousands on five bucks, okay? But, I've, I've just never gone to corned beef. So this is gonna be new in this video today for me. I did find these at the grocery store. Now, uh, if you've watched some of my TikToks, you know that I went pretty viral, and especially with my beans on toast. I did find British beans. Heinz beans. I say British because Americans ain't eating this. This is not what we're eating. Americans is eating bush beans, but this is what Brits love. Tomato sauce and my baked beans. Mm. We're not trying to give this video crap. I'm just telling you, I'm way out of my element with things that I would usually buy. Okay, look at this. Malt vinegar is another one. It's even got the UK flag, how cute. And I think it says London pub. Then we've got our baked potatoes. Um, these are 100% just American baked potatoes. We are gonna make mashed potatoes out of those because it looks like that is our first step when I read. Switch on your deep fat fryer, okay? So I personally put oil on a stove top because I don't mess with all those deep fryers and stuff because to me they get all gunky and yucky and, okay, anyways, I can just clean my pot. So I know, let's go back to Michelle's tea in a pot. But that is gonna be my deep fryer for today. It is oil, it's gonna be on the stove top. Boom, deep fryer. Mix your mashed potatoes and corned beef together. Okay, so first I gotta make some mashed potatoes, guys. Let's do that. Potatoes are chopped. They're in, they're boiling. So now we just gotta wait on those to cook to actually make mashed potatoes. And starring in this video is my new tea towel slash hand towel that was a gift. And I love them, guys. It's part of my wardrobe when I cook. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna wait on that. If I go ahead and start some of my, cause it looks like I have a dipping sauce, like a flour and things to do. I might go ahead and start that. This would be perfect if you had like mashed potatoes the night before, which I didn't have in my fridge. But leftover mashed potatoes would have been awesome to make a second dish for a second day that's something new. Get it all, that makes sense. Mashed potatoes are off. And I've added salt, pepper. I add mayonnaise to my mashed potatoes. Hopefully that is not gonna affect how this and the corn beef can stuff comes together. But if you're in the South and you don't use Duke's mayonnaise and you don't put it in your mashed potatoes, I'm gonna question how Southern you are, okay? So I do add that. Y'all, it's okay that I add that much. We're gonna mash them up. Y'all get it. We're gonna make mashed potatoes and go on to step two. Lovely Choppy didn't give me any measurements. <laughs> he must think I'm a skilled chef at this point. So, he said, blah, blah, blah. Make up a batter. That consists of all-purpose flour, water, 
black pepper, and a teaspoon of malt vinegar. I mean, that surely cannot be too hard just to measure because I'm used to making that, like things like for my chicken pot pie. I'm not making a whole lot tonight because I'm honestly used to feeding like my neighborhood plus his brother. Dad's not eating dinner here tonight. Um, it is church night, so it'll kind of just be like me and Christian and Caroline kind of running in and grabbing whatever. Honestly, I think I'm making it right now so I can just try it out because I think it's going to be its best at warm. On the malt vinegar, he just wants a teaspoonful. So if I'm making a paste, I just got, I mean, I just poured y'all. I just, I, I really didn't even measure. So I'm about to just, I'm gonna pour a little bit of water because the water is the active ingredient. That's what's gonna make your paste. You're gonna have, boobs. You're either gonna have really runny or not runny. Oh my gosh, my guys are here to cut grass. Of course they are doing my video. They've been needing to cut my grass for like three weeks. Gotta continue this step with you guys. I gotta make this, ah, paste. If you got this and it ain't even coming off, like that that's not what you need that is not a batter okay so keep going this is what i like to see in a batter that looks good it is still it's still thick and then of course i'm going to add more liquid so it might get a little bit more runny look michelle looks like she just knows what she's doing i mean guys this is a teaspoonful or maybe a tablespoon teaspoon one good thing about batter is if you get too much water you just add more flour if you got too much flour you just add water the only difference is is that um you don't really want to stir a batter too much as i sit here and just keep on stirring it because good batters are honestly stirred and just left alone like what's this for i don't even know like does that go under there i've never opened corned beef before this i'm telling y'all is so new to me Ew, is corned beef just fully cooked and ready to serve hot or cold Reminds me of Spam. Is it like Spam? I never ate Spam either. Make a ball out of your mashed potato and corned beef into the size of a medium sized potato. Season with black pepper and salt. Okay. Make up a batter that consists of all purpose flour, water, black pepper. Okay, we did that part. Okay, dip your potato balls into the batter. Then drop your potato balls, shaking any excess off into the oil. Be careful not to splash yourself. Thanks, Choppy, for that little note. Guys, I need y'all's help. It ain't got a hook or nothing. Oh my goodness. Am I honestly gonna have to YouTube how to open up corned beef or call my mom? My mom's at work, so she ain't gonna be able to help me. She would be dying laughing at me right now, not know how to open this. Can I still use a can opener? Like what, what? Hey y'all know, I went and watched that YouTube video. That gentleman was so helpful, thank you. But. Like seriously, there's a YouTube video on how to open this. There's a problem. Okay, he said you want to turn your key upside down. You kind of want to bend that in because you're going to turn this. Watch this, guys. Okay, yeah, I did it. Oh! I mean, that's just fun. I want to just buy corned beef just to. Oh, wait, my key. I lost my key. Oh, I lied. I don't want to buy corned beef. No! Y'all just never know what it was going to happen with me. All right, guys. So I went around this whole can. Oh! It looks as disgusting as I thought it was gonna look. All right, that's not bad. <gasps> Y'all know what I did. My true followers out there know what I did. I just did not make this even gluten free. I used all purpose flour and it was not gluten free. <laughs> Oops, Caroline. She's gonna be so mad because she can't have any of this. I'm so sorry, baby girl. Hey guys, I just dumped my beans into a pot. I'm not joking, guys. Like, look at that. Smell that. <laughs> that smells like Beanie Weenie Show. Like, that is not Southern baked beans. That's uh, okay, so baked beans, the reason I have an issue with the baked bean things, and I know it's a staple, I know it is. The reason I have a problem is, baked beans is also a staple in the South, okay? We're used to Bush's baked beans. You put those things on a pan, you put bacon, maple syrup, it's like its own dish. And then when I open up Brit's baked beans, and it legit smells like kids beanie weenies, I'm like, Anyways, I'm sure they're gonna be good because I personally like Beanie Weenies. Hey 
guys, we're waiting on our oil to heat up. Little story time with Michelle. I'm sure you'll hear the story more than once in a cooking video. Whenever I blew up with my tea in the UK, everybody was like, oh my God, are you not offended? How are you not offended that people are criticizing it this much? The Brits only think they are like so proud of their food. And that is one thing that I love about British people. A lot of things that they hold on to, food, culture, food is part of culture. They hold on to it and they want to savor it. They truly do for what it is. The South is the same way here in America, guys. Our culture runs so deep from farm life, food. Food is huge for culture here in, in America, in the South. I think some Southerns don't even know it. If they have never traveled the world, they do not even understand how it's embedded into them and how the rest of the world, until I made tea like I did, maybe I was a little bit dumb that people didn't get it, but I've grown so much from there. When we moved to Florida, guys, you know, we haven't even been here but about a year. Um, I don't really, Florida's totally different than the South of like in North Carolina. It's two Southern things. They're two, they are considered both South states. Um, but they are 100% different, okay? North Carolina is a, this cattle, churches, just southern, southern. Your mom's beating you with the Bible on Sundays. That is North Carolina, and that's where I grew up. And food is huge. The culture there with the food is huge. So, my husband took me into this restaurant here in Florida, and it's like a southern mom-and-pop shop. I almost started crying. I really did. I know you guys are going to laugh and think, oh, my God, Michelle, but I did. And he's like, you know, if y'all know my husband, Josh, he's like, girl, what is wrong with you? Like, why? We at dinner and I never, ever cry. It's just not my nature, guys. I'm actually a happy person. I mean, sure, we all get our sad days, like blah, but I don't cry. And when he saw a tear roll down, he's like, oh, crap. He's like, what did I do? Uh, he's, he done thought, he done messed up. Huge like if Michelle's crying. And I was like, this took me home home. The food, even he thought it was crazy. Only some of you watching this will get it. I think that's why I love that as my niche. Um, it, it does, certain foods, I did not even know certain food could speak to me. But at that moment, I was transferred back to my Nana's kitchen and okra on the table Sunday after church and so many memories came back and I couldn't help but tear up. And he's like, you never tear up, woman. Like, there's nothing I can do or anybody could ever do. You're just gonna laugh your, well, through it. He's like, so, he's like, you just have your moment. I'm gonna go make my plate. But, so guys, thanks for always watching these videos. Thanks for staying tuned in. I truly do love food for more than it just being food. It really does say something about you. It can take you back places and make you remember certain memories. And there's just a beauty to cooking. I don't know, maybe I should've went into culinary school. Y'all might agree that I needed culinary school, but I don't know. All right, just testing my grease out. <laughs> it's hot and it's ready and I'm nervous. Okay. Okay guys, so I'm gonna try to get the ones that match, like this size. All right, I'm nervous. Good see you. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna set my timer for seven minutes. This was my mistake. I didn't even them. I didn't batter them at all. <laughs> Two, we go. Okay. Duh, Michelle. Come on. Duh. They're so mushy. Okay, now. <laughs> Maybe that'll do better. Let's pull the first two off. I can't tell you if that's what they were supposed to look like or not. I mean, hopefully I done it and it's a success. <laughs> We are gonna taste it, of course, to make sure that it's good, no matter what this is. Guys, it's up for taste test. Let's do this. It's kind of mashy. I know, y'all are already gonna tell me I need to put the baked beans. I'm all about food mixing, like, I get it, the taste, but I wanna taste what this truly tastes like first. It's not bad. It's actually kinda good. That is different. The corned beef ta like takes it over, but that's kind of good. It kind of reminds me, we make potato pancakes. I'm about to show you guys potato pancakes. Kind of reminds me of that. I mean, okay, let's try it with the baked beans. Let's try the baked beans by themselves first. It's 
beanie weenies, guys, okay? But whatever. Don't really like for my food to touch, but I know you guys like for it all to mix. That was actually okay too. Okay, okay, I feel you. That was nice, Chavi, thanks. 100% I could make that again. Personally, I'd like to have some corn on my plate with that. Or, I don't know, maybe something green like a green bean, but that's good. But I'm gonna end the video here, guys. I love y'all and God bless you, and until the next, bye. <laughs>